someone is calling in and they have an issue with water clarity. It's not just as simple as saying, use this and your pond will clear up in X period of time. There's a number of different types of clarity issues and causes of those clarity issues. There are, and one of the things that we really have to separate out at the beginning of that conversation is, is this very fine sediment, clay particles and silt particles from a storm event or erosion, or is it nutrient related and you're starting to see evidence of very small algae clouding the water? And there are two different approaches there. The first approach, if we have sediment in the pond, mm -hmm. is to use a, a pond clarifier product that is a flocculant that, in essence, takes those very fine particles that you can't really see, but they're, they're clouding the water, and makes them sticky. So they clump together, and when they clump together, they become heavier and they settle out of the water column. So if there's a sediment problem and we've controlled what's stirring up the sediment, it's usually a two to three treatment process with pond clarifier to settle that material out to the bottom and, and clear the water. Now, we often with sediment issues run into a situation where either catfish or turtles or grass carp or other bottom loving organisms are rooting around in the pond bottom. So that can be kind of a, a tough cycle to, to break. So we need to think about that if we have a sediment problem and there's not an obvious source like a thunderstorm that spewed sure. dirt into the pond. The nutrient caused water clarity issues are treated in two ways. So we have the pond cleanse product, which is a blend of eight different strains of beneficial bacteria that digest the nitrogen and they also act as somewhat of a natural flocculant. So it's not our first choice if we know we have only a sediment-based clarity issue, but if we do know that we have a nutrient issue, Pond Cleanse is the first place that we go because it kind of takes care of two birds with one stone. It deals with the nutrients and it deals to some degree with the sediment. <clears throat> the other product that we use in that situation is phosphate eliminator because phosphate contributes to the cloudy water. It also contributes to algae growth and it can be those single cell algae that are causing the water clarity issue. The phosphate eliminator actually binds the phosphate particles to the phosphate eliminator and drops them to the bottom of the pond and clears it in that way and also reduces the amount of nutrients available for algae growth. I think so to, to take a step back, some of the first things that we ask when someone calls in about clarity is very basic, what color is it? Because then it helps us to go down those paths. So is it brown water? Is it gray? Is it green? Because those can give us some hints. Doing the water testing so that we can determine if high nutrients are a factor doing a bottle test with taking some water and seeing if the sediment settles out gives some additional insight as well. So those are some good first steps to determine which, which direction we're going with that. Exactly. And when we think about using something like the pond cleanse, those beneficial bacteria are very similar to the muck remover bacteria in that they multiply very, very quickly. So a single packet that we're putting in has billions of bacteria in it. That's with a B, billions. And those bacteria multiply, multiply, multiply until they're at a point in the pond population where they're consuming so much of the nutrients that they don't have enough nutrient to sustain themselves. And then they start to essentially feed on themselves which is why with a pond cleanse product, we're doing a two week application cycle so that we don't have the ups and downs of that population of bacteria. We're really kind of leveling that bacteria population off so that we can control the nutrients at a much lower level. So this is kind of like a preventative maintenance type of treatment. Phosphate eliminator should be looked at as the same thing 
uh, if we were talking about humans, we'd be talking about a daily vitamin that takes care of a whole variety of things and just ends up giving you a, a much healthier situation for your pond. So we talk about pond cleanse. And I think a really common question we get, because like you said, it is also a bacteria like muck remover where that breakdown is. And, and really the, the, the pond cleanse is, is a bacteria packet. It's in a water soluble packet is just thrown into the pond. Really simple. It's that easy. It's that easy. And the, the outer packet, it melts and releases the bacteria and enzymes into the pond and is focusing on the water, cleaning the water. Whereas those muck remover pellets, when you throw those in, they sink and then they're dissolving at the bottom of the pond. So like you said, most of the bacteria is actually staying in that bottom area. And there are there is a little bit of crossover in the strains of bacteria mm -hmm. that are found in the two products, but the majority of the bacteria are different. Mm -hmm. So uh, the bacteria and muck remover are focused on muck digestion and dealing with the nutrients that are attached to the muck. And the strains of bacteria that are in the pond cleanse are focused on the dissolved nutrients that are in the water column. The pond cleanse then the the application is even less precise than the muck remover pellets. You're just having to toss them in the water. Quarter acre pond, you're using two packets, mm -hmm. using it every two weeks. Now, the one thing that's a little bit more difficult is that realistic time frame of how long is your is it going to take for your water to clear when you're using something like the pond cleanse versus something like a water clarifier. Right, that again depends on the nutrient concentrations and the weather pattern, the time of year. Dissolved so there are a whole oxygen. Uh, the dissolved oxygen levels that you have in your pond. So there are a whole variety of factors that go into that. But in general, you're seeing after the second treatment, some pretty significant improvements. And once you hit that third treatment, if you haven't seen improvement, then it's probably time to talk to us about doing a water quality test looking at the benchmark water quality test and then moving to look at that second water quality test and see what's different. Um, and we can adjust the treatment cycle. Based on that, we may find that we need to use some more phosphate eliminator because there's not just a standard dose for phosphate eliminator. That's very dependent on the amount of phosphate that you have both in your water column and bound to the soils in the bottom of the pond and coming in in your water source. Sure. So your water source can have phosphate if it's a well, if it's a stream, if it's runoff from around the pond, from areas that are fertilized and maybe areas that haven't even been fertilized in years because phosphate will actually bind to soil particles, very fine soil particles. So if you have any sediment at all coming into the pond, there's likely phosphate attached to that. So that again is an ongoing treatment, but we need to adjust that dose to make sure that we're binding all the phosphate that's available in the pond and don't get those algae blooms and, and water clarity issues from excess phosphate. Again, a common thing that we get questions of is, do I use phosphate eliminator or do I use pond cleanse because- The answer is yes. Yeah, because they do both have abilities to clear the water and then it's an either or, well, do I use this one or do I use that one? Can they both be used together? Um, and there isn't a wrong answer there, but there are some significant differences between those treatments. There are significant differences. And so they just treat very different components that of the nutrient cycle that when those components are left untreated, combine to decrease pond health, increase algae blooms, decrease dissolved oxygen and, and really cause problems. So in most cases, we're recommending that pond cleanse be used with the phosphate eliminator because they're really complementary. Mm -hmm. And the muck remover is also a complementary product. So for the best case scenario, we wanna use all three of those products at the recommended treatment interval so that we don't have jumps in nutrient levels that cause us to have to treat more. It's, it's really about a comprehensive treatment system that we can enhance the pond health over the long term without any extreme intervention.